gentleman over here is the current chairperson from the Art Factory and graduated from Arts at Curtin and has worked as an illustrator and a props builder. She's currently building a 3D printing service turned cafe. Oh, apparently. That's too early to Um, possibly. <laughs> It'll be coming with workshops, we'll see. We're waiting. <laughs> And Scott is a notorious figure around Perth and is a music audio software ninja um, and director at FX Expansion. He's the curator of the long running Noise Machine experimental music concerts and founding member of the Art Factory. He has a keen interest in music, robots, and steampunk. Both Jenna and Scott assist running the steampunk of their ball. And Scott also wrote his steed, his steed being a pseudo mechanical ostrich. <laughs> named the Beat Truth <laughs> to record breaking speeds and is the current holder of the land speed record for Steam the World the world land speed record. There isn't a lot of competition. Yeah, <laughs> so no, don't take it away. You just did our whole talk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Squirrels. 
the cafe. Three dollars fifty for a two-hour session. We decided, I think. You could, it's about right. You could stay at a cafe for fourteen dollars for a working day. When you compare that to the cost of joining the art factory later, remember that figure: fourteen dollars a day to sit in a cafe. Your studio, or in my case, a Ricky Tower, or a volcano, hollowed out and power of the Earth's magma to you know, control to the planet theory. So, really, my goals are your goals. We want the same things resources, money, the power to change the world for good or evil, a place to scheme, a place where staff or collaborators or minions, they can be all one and the same, um, and do their thing and time to do it. And it can't be a very small item. If you're dabbling in the fourth dimension, then space and time, of course, can be combined. Um, so we're here to encourage collaboration. We want to, yeah, there are many benefits to collaborating. You can share the cost of your resources, the cost of renting a space. Um, you get instamatic insta uh, networking with your colleagues. You can learn from their example. If they got hit on the head by a superhero that you don't want to get hit on the head by, then they might be able to tell you about it. Or a city council, in fact. Or a city council, yeah. Um, or I've babbled on for a while. Oh, you could probably give us <laughs> some actual examples rather than my current. Oh, but yeah, well, if you um, if you've worked for a particular client that hasn't treated you uh, quite the way you would like, or if um, a certain city council has been. Um, Delaying your payments or such, you know, you can protect each other from that and you can help each other out. And uh, yeah, also letters for each other if you're writing grants, um, letters of recommendation and stuff like that. It's very, very useful to have very strong networks. Also, you, yeah, you need peer review basically all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it, makes you, uh, it makes you aware of how good or bad you are, how you're doing, um, and how far you can take your work. And what are you doing with that stare of fuzzy felt that I have a... Ah! Oh! <laughs> yeah, we're that one now. Oh no, I think somebody used that felt on a table. Um, it but has fur now. I don't know what. This is what happens when you work in a collaborative space. Things happen and without much explanation. So, um, this is a rant, apparently, but I need to, um, I need to see what the audience feels about originality. Have any of you ever worried about having your ideas stolen? Or yeah. being original? <laughs> or having your ideas kind of contaminated by what you see? Have you, have you ever worried about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have a rant for you. I, really, um, I wrote it down, so it's not going to be some passionate um, perhaps. So, history repeats itself. When you're not aware of what else is happening around you, you end up repeating what has been done. Do not view it as a threat or as competition. Imagine if scientists and inventors <coughs> excuse me, didn't read the research journals or the work of their peers because they wanted to, their works to be unique or original or special. If you're too busy protecting your own ideas, you will never realise how they can blossom through an excited discussion with other creatives. If you place such value on your own original ideas, you will never find out how much better yours could be. You will never realize your potential. Such a cliche. You will waste your time discovering things that could have been obvious and beneficial to you long ago. Instead of people trying to talk over one another, each practically saying the same thing, this is what um, convergent evolution is like when we have globalization and the internet, a lot of people come to the same ideas independently at the same time. So instead of lots of people doing that independently and the audience getting bored, why not build a dialogue that snowballs into something totally new that we couldn't possibly imagine? If we work together, not necessarily physically or even intellectually, but conceptually and culturally, we can help each other jump so much further. Our creations can leapfrog instead of taking the long way around independently of each other. Why wouldn't you want that? Um, so to those who feel the need to protect their ideas from being stolen and to those who feel the need to protect their ideas from being contaminated, I want to say to you both, you are inescapably a product of your surroundings and you will inevitably have an impact 
on your surroundings. You are creative. The more you know, the more ideas you'll have. What are you afraid of? So, uh, yeah, also collaborative and speculative discussion is an excellent cure for creative block. Just talk to somebody. Although sometimes people talk too much. I have to admonish them to <laughs> do something and fail. <laughs> Oh, so instead like of paper, doing, paper yeah. So if you if you're just stuck, but you kind of know what to do, just do it. Um, but if you're actually stuck and there's nothing in your head, then you need to talk. There, there's a time for. That's a rant for you on originality, and um, I think. Because one of the things we find happening around this, this the art factory, well, well, actually, let's let's talk about that. Okay, what so uh, <laughs> <laughs> these are what follows are, are a few um, slides of my work. That um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, say of myself that I'm making a good living from my art, but I'm definitely having a blast working with other people. So most of these slides are works that I've done where I've had a significant contribution to the idea, or I've had a brief, or it's mostly my idea, and some other people have helped me with uh, technical issues. So this one is a it's made of five bicycles and a ladder. It crushes macadamia nuts, and we did a cooking show at the Fringe Festival. <laughs> um, this is with the I brain mush of four people, and none of us could ever imagine that we would be building five bicycles together and I'm having a cooking show. Um, so you ride over the macadamia nuts? Or? No. Oh no, there's a can at the back, at the very back bicycle. There's oh. a can, and it pushes a lever, and that goes to a four bar mechanism because macadamias are really really tough. I spent two weeks like analyzing vice scripts and creating a large steel <laughs> replica that in fact bent on macadamias. Um, anyway it crushes them very noisily um, and we ride around and collect ingredients and cook things and argue a lot. Um, that was extremely fun. Thanks. Um, this is this is my planetary gear set. <laughs> <laughs> um, it goes around and around and around. This was a, um, a prototype for uh, a large pedal powered um, version for Boyfriend Street Festival. Um, it was in collaboration with one other artist. She did all of the planets that went on it, on the big version, and, um, and it's based on uh, astrolabes and, and astrological calendars and stuff like that. Um, No, I don't do this. Um, but this looks like the sort of thing that a high powered laser cutter could cut. Yes, I don't think in I fact. Such an infernal device. <laughs> in fact, come and visit the art factory. We have a laser cutter that's big enough to fit a person inside. Like, no, Mr. Bond, I expect him to die. It's that awesome. And I, in fact, cut all of these parts out of MDF. This is all wood um, on the laser cutter. Yes, that went in a light box in the city. Just, they didn't have power, so it just sat there. Is that, <coughs> is that replica? Yes. So you can, yes. You can mass produce it if you want. Press go on that yes. laser cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Other than you have to do all the bolts, so many bolts. You sell it as a kit. I do. It's a real suit of bolts. Get a minion involved. I'll teach you how to use the laser cutter if you put together my art, which I'm going to sell there. Give me profits for because you have learned how to use the laser cutter and you're very pleased now. This is what happens. You go this to the art factory and you teach people to do stuff and they will become your minions because they're so happy to do something. Great! It's better than interns. <laughs> this, in fact, this, this is Scott in, in, and a friend. Both standing on one seat. This is uh, for the Northbridge New Year's Festival. Um, so, uh, this, for this one, I got a brief. I want you to take this mobility scooter and turn it into a hot air balloon. <laughs> um, so, uh, and how did you come across this project? Um, oh, in fact, one of my was there networking were, involved? There was a lot of networking involved. So, I, I worked quite a bit with a circus. Producer, um, so you may have seen Flip Tees before. Um, she's she's kind of produced a lot of um, the New Year's festivals in Northbridge, and um, we met her through uh, the ball that we ran, the steampunk ball. ball. So we we're just like, let's put on an event. It'll be fun, and we invited a whole bunch of performers, 
and then they see the stuff that you make and they all see what each other does or the, that grammar was terrible, sorry. But they all see their works in, in that context and, um, and they start to network and they go, oh hey, you did that thing, can you do a thing for me? Um, and I got a lot of work out of putting on that kind of event. Yeah. And yeah, if you've got 40 or 50 people cruising through a space and maybe a few more hundred on the mailing list, you don't need many people in here popping up with work for you. You just need to be better at time management. Yeah. Um, this is me having fun in the backyard of the art factory. Making we just like sparks. Sparks great. Uh, this is my friend making planets, and those are the gears for the, the large version, the two meter one. The pedal pedal one. Yeah. Yes. Um, space etiquette is very important. We had to do a lot of negotiating with the amount of space that we took up for the duration of that piece. That's your first view of the lab. <laughs> what the hell's that? It's a giant jellyfish. Dress. It's more bicycle. It's personal. Yeah. <laughs> so this is also a brief. Um, you know, the steel bone crinolines. She wanted a tricycle inside, two people pedaling. So um, you get to singing also on top. <laughs> so it's a singer with a giant dress that's being wheeled around like a chariot. Um, <laughs> so you get to learn a lot of really awesome stuff when people ask you to do crazy whacked out things. So this is an example of, um, I mean, you were known for doing bicycle things. Mm, I learned we on the, the cooking show bicycle, I learned to weld, and then suddenly, oh, you're that person who does bikes. You're the artist that can do welding <laughs> stuff and bicycles. Um, and then, oh, and you've got all these other people around. Don't ask me about radio, insurance. The radio electronics <laughs> that, you know, that was sending music to and from mm. the main. Yeah, so there, the there were some, so. quite a lot of collaboration in that piece too. She would go, you yeah. can do my production, and the, the sparks that I was making was for this thing. It had part of a trolley and a bicycle from the tip, and it was pretending to be flat, needed a little more fixing, but um, that was actually this part, the wing structure, was part of um, something that Scott made mm. for the Bow Arts Ball. Um, that was a performative piece, and it had a plane, and uh, and it was languishing in the space, so it restructured it and added fins, and now it's a Wright Brothers-esque thing that got uh, hired out a number of times uh, for different events. And can we mass produce the wings? Yes, we can, because they're all made by robot tools, and they have the designs for, so we just... So, should we need wings, or circular wings, probably? <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> so now let's introduce the artifactory properly. This is a view into our world, or about a quarter of it, so I'd say. Um, looking towards the bar, underneath the Zeppelin, we built one of the uh, steampunk walls, and lots of people going about their happy, jolly business. Statistics. So we've been running for six years now. We're completely independent. We're a hacker space, a maker space. We don't hack into the government networks or anything. We're about hacking hardware, making our own software, generally just making stuff. So maker space is probably a better description. Uh, 400 square meters, 20 by 20, in Osborne Park, which means we can make as much noise and mess as we like. No one gives a damn, and we have as much parking as needed uh, after 4.30 because Osborne Park just vacates. This is an important point to note if you're trying to run a big uh, collaborative space uh, because we were originally in a small artist studio up back someone's house in Mount Morley and once you've got more than 10 or 11 cars parked in the neighborhood streets people get very very irate. They also wonder what a lot of under-socialized 20-something men are doing in a shed <laughs> what strange noises and smells coming out of it. <laughs> Meth lab, we've had. Uh, brothel, we've had. Thankfully the gender balance Proving slightly that the, uh, the slights towards our actual purposes don't change. Um, we're completely member funded. We put on events that most of our, which, which make about 25% of our funding, uh, music concerts and workshops and things, but most of it is actually just people putting in money in once a month, uh, keeping the space going. How much a month? $75. Compare that to your price of coffee use at the cafe, <laughs> which you all noted carefully before. When you consider that most of the membership are, are professional types who maybe only come once or twice a week on a weekend or uh, on an evening, 
If you're an artist type, you have a 400 square metre warehouse that you might be sharing with one or two other people who are full-time artists. So it's a lot of space, a lot of tools, uh, for not that much money if you look at it per day. Two and a half dollars per day. Amazing. That's less than the coffee for what? two hours. Goodness. Oh. <laughs> no, um, I'll just jump in and say that um, a lot of people come looking for a desk. Like a lot of artists that I've um, been talking to, coming and visiting the space for the tools, they say, but I just want somewhere to leave my stuff. Um, everybody wants a desk and you really can work quite well if you can learn to rethink the way that you leave stuff. So if you can negotiate a space and work in a, a co-working space basically where everyone uses every surface, um, if, you can, if you can manage to work in that kind of space it's actually a lot more a lot more creative, you, you have to mix your projects with other people's projects, spatially, and the ideas and conversations just happen a lot more frequently rather than people coming and just walking past your desk and going, oh, it's... But equally, we have laser cutters and robot tools, and if you want to make a desk with a detachable top and then put it on a shelf, you can do that. And we have storage that goes up four metres, so we can have like a multi-storey car park on desks, and you just kind of take your desktop down and put all these the legs. And we've been talking about this for 40 years and we still haven't got <laughs> There are prototypes kicking around, it will happen. If somebody walks in and says, I really need one, yeah. then it tends to happen like yeah. that. The, the space is a product of its members. So, yeah, if, if, you can, um, if you can be flexible with your working habits, then you can do anything. Let's go. And mm. another thing is to note that we're not dealing with um, just one particular expertise or profession in the space as well, that we have IT guys, you know, coders, web guys. If you're trying to get your work distributed around the world, there are people who write video games that are distributed on Steam and you know, through Apple and everything. They know how to get stuff out to a global market and they'll be all happy to tell you if you have to do some of the art for their next video game. So that's the kind of backwards and forwards thing that can go on. Um, but yeah, you've got engineers, uh, visual artists, sculptors, people that do music, you know, build synthesizers, use synthesizers, all kinds of stuff. Stuff. Ah, so that's a return back to the early days when you're trying to kickstart your collaborative space. You've got to attract people. And for us, we wanted to make something that felt like a, a mad science laboratory. You want to go in there and go, oh yeah, we can bend the world the laws of physics as well as the actual legal laws. This is great. Unless you're looking for free energy, we've had those guys come through. No, no, no. Yeah. They Maybe get lectures and then they get... They wear out enough get... time. There's no such thing as free energy. <laughs> we made one law. And it's the... <laughs> one one that says you don't get free energy. Yes, that is the one law we made. So... Quite early on, we did. We had to get some um, pretty special tools in there to make people know that this is natural, real hacker space. This is not just a bunch of people talking about hacking space. We've actually got one of the like the golden rusted for um, hacker space tools. And at the time, there was a lot of people talking about 3D printers and CNC machines, which are computer-controlled death things that you know, dissolve wood before they're turning bits, but to precise accuracy to allow you to create beautiful art nouveau or art deco bits under computer control. And then lots of them, because you've got that design. So, early on, let's get a place set this. So, you need a brain in a tank. Of course you need a brain in a tank. People say, right, that's the kind of green goo tank ridden place that we need to go and see. Very popular with the nephews and nieces as well. <laughs> but, um, this is a picture of Electra, our Archiphone, which was a 40,000 volts musical instrument that used uh, Commodore V6 ignition coils to generate the fourth state of matter, plasma, and put it under your musical control. So you could play a keyboard. Plug it into a MIDI keyboard and, and had zap it music, vaporizing the air, in fact. And Stripping the electrons from the very nuclear which they were pretty friendly to it, yeah. And making music. Yes. Very, very exciting. Um, this is 
another version of the iPhone that we used to take to Sci-Tech. Uh, so yeah, more networking and work came back through Sci-Tech because of our friendliness towards Sci-Tech. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Amazing that they let us come multiple times. The number of people that are like, what happens if I put my finger like actually dangerous? It won't kill you. for another week. And uh, running around to O'Day um, at, at various universities with Jai Koibosh, who is our Lord and Master, Hello, uh, Beaky's Diaries. Um, it's a bright baby box. Yeah. And look, he's now got a friend, which is something <laughs> <obvious. laughs> That was also for another event that I put on with a few friends for a fundraising gig. You took our finishing unit to. <laughs> oh, just the topic. Right. Yeah. Should have eyeballs bursting from every wall. This is anything is possible, and we're watching you very carefully as you do it. That was made for um, the Lunar Experience. Dimity was um, working out of the art factory to put on the Lunar Experience. She did the labyrinth and the lab of Brian and stuff like that. So, so many people coming through. It's really cool. So we we tend to have stuff from all the various networks. Um, the groups that we've helped all over the space. When people come in, they, you really get an idea of, oh my god, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's extremely technical things that are there. There's steampunk up the wild zoo there. There's a music stage there. Uh, we've helped set up uh, Blake and Swan, who, who put their, they base their constitution and set up on us, on our constitution. And we helped them through the early stages. Uh, the Great Steampunk Fair, GSPA, pretty much all artifact people who went, yay, let's put on balls of no excuses to build incredibly large things that we then have to get into a cave. Very good um, uh, Then, yeah, there's the you know, uh, Arduino nights for all of those who want to do like electronics in your clothes or embed electronics in some way, then Arduino is a fantastic little computer for about 20 bucks or 5 bucks if you get it from China. Great for getting electronics into your artwork every single Wednesday. Come on. Um, our various music evenings, modular synth night, uh, noise machine experiment music night, um, all the, the weird experimental sounds like the WA Poetry Society is back here. So lots and lots and lots of different parts of society coming through. All, some of whom have work for you or are looking for people to help. There you go, that's a, not a telephone switchboard, but one of the synths. Bathing Swan, uh, Death in the Car Park. Um, we used to run a club night every couple of months uh, uh, called Rapture. And now we tell you about your adventures with the council. Um, <laughs> Stirring City Council, uh, where it begins. Um, if you're trying to set up a collaborative, co-working, creative space, make sure your local council knows what the hell it is and it's already on the statute books. Um, for some time now, we have not been able to do fundraising nights or we were actually under a cloud as to whether we could exist at all because Sterling City just didn't know how to classify us and therefore what our parking requirement would be. It all boiled down to how many parking spots we had. It wasn't that we were creating 40,000 volt plasma, letting on fireballs, uh, pumping out insane decibels in the dead of night. No, it's did we have enough car park spaces and we pointed out to them that all the Osborne Park was a car park up before 30 and after a while, two years. Uh, they accepted this fact and now we're allowed to exist. So hopefully we will spin some discs once more and we'll come see the space with inky lights and possibly lasers! So many lasers doing so many cute things. I'm just going to do it like this for a bit because I have more laser pictures, but I need to do the presentation. But this is what it would look like. <laughs> <laughs> and these are home built lasers by somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, if you ever come up to our noise machine things that happen once a month, um, often the optic nerve laser artist is there doing his thing. Fantastic. So, a, a brief listing of some of our notable um, kernel machines are the laser covers that are popular. Uh, CNC router, 3D printers, lots and lots of electronics, lots of welding gear, all the usual wood, metal work a bit, hot glue guns, yes, we've got hot glue guns, um, and there's a gig stage and even a, a soundproof rehearsal room. So, lots of facilities. Here is a 3D printer, sewing machine. Very early 3D printer. There is a CNC machine which cuts wood with amazing accuracy and on the computer controls, you can go off and have Tea or beer, a lot of work for you. It is a robot minion that helps you to work. 
What tends to happen though is you've built something to save yourself labour and uh, three or four of your friends come around and call the rep wrap. It's a self-replicating, rapid prototyping 3D printer. All the white bits have been printed by another rep wrap. <laughs> 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 the grey goo is coming so soon. Oh, I love it. Um, what do we get resin printers? You're all hanging out for the resin printers. You can have figurines of anything that you make or in fact you can make I don't know. I, are, are many of you illustrators here? Photographers? Dancers? I don't it's know. It's so nice. <laughs> demographics. Okay. But you can make anything. But the, these printers are really, really slow. Mm. And the resolution isn't that great. Anyway, it's so a new jeweler who wanted to sell theirs. They're hanging out for the, uh, the resin ones, which have insane accuracy. But um, thanks to patent laws, We've had this technology since the 80s, only it's not available commercially yet. So you'll be waiting another couple of years. I bet China has one. It's just ready to go when the patent is Sorry, that's another round. <laughs> so basically, China Bro and us want you to come up and no, come up and check us out. And but even the blatant advertisement aside, <laughs> work with other people. Um, find out what they know, be exposed to what they know, let them help you because sometimes you get... We've had engineering types who come down, you know, fly and fly up, come off the mines, and all they want to do is build 3D printers and CNC machines. You ask them what they want to make on it, they're like, I don't know, I just want to make the tool. The robot. And, yeah, this is a resource you can abuse, I mean, uh, <laughs> take advantage of. Um, that's nice to get up again. Alright, right, so um, website architecture.org.au, info at architecture.org.au, if you want to um, speak to us, uh, Facebook page at Architecture. Come up and have a look and ask questions, and if we can help you get a, a collaborative space going just based on our various experiences of wrangling with uh, local councils, uh, race and gaming and liquor. Here's, here's a hot tip. Have you ever wanted to put on a wine and cheese night? Yes. Have you ever thought that you had to get an occasional license? No, you don't. You all know about the event, uh, the cultural event exemption rule. If you have a event that is for a purpose other than that drinking alcohol and it's under 100 people and goes between 6 and 10 at night, you don't need to get a license. Art exhibition. Art exhibition. Music concerts, poetry readings, just get somebody up there doing something for us, save you 50 bucks. You can put towards your art. <laughs> what was, was it? Cultural exemption? Cultural exemption. The cultural event exemption, yes. I think you might still need to have somebody who is RGL you know, approved, or whatever it is, responsible service approved, but yeah. And selling your art is always easier when there's alcohol around. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we did want to more about mm -hmm. paid collaboration, but I think we're like seriously out of time. No, no. Really? Oh, wait, we're up. Oh, we're up. Oh, yeah, questions, questions. Let's do the questions thing. Question. Question. Okay, I've got two questions. That, like, That's uh, right. This first one you can tell me afterwards, but I've got like a 10 year old nephew, and he's like seriously geeky. He'll mm -hmm. talk to me for like three hours, and he's not about my own but <laughs> So I was like, oh, I'll give you like an Arduino or whatever. Raspberry Pi, but I looked on the web and I was like, I don't know how many modules you need to get and all that kind of stuff. So maybe we just have a conversation about like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I've done like um, laser cutting and I looked at your website ages ago and I was like, you have to have a PhD, but ideally I'd just like to come in for like three days and just pump out stuff. But yeah, like, you'd have is that time the right space for me to do that? You could. No, 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 we can do it. Um, we always say that if you're going to be industrially pumping out stuff uh, for profit to sell, or you do a particular large project, then just make a contribution that's uh, proportional to the amount of wear and tear you're imposing on the machine if you're not a regular paying member. And so also be considerate of other people that want to use the tools. Yeah. That's primarily what the space is for, is for sharing. So if you want to make stuff for your work, that's totally cool, but you just got to be aware of the people around you. I kind of think of like as hacking because like if I knew it was commercial, I'd just go around to like action laser cut around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you would go hard. It. If it's more like I want to do stuff and yeah. then see what works. And Prototyping work. definitely. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah, just go for That's it. The, the only gotcha with the laser cutters is that you have to be trained. And yeah, you I don't have, want to do that. 
Hey? I don't training know. takes an afternoon, it's fine. You won't be able to do any of it if you don't know what buttons to press. It takes an afternoon, it's not that hard. Or you pay somebody to press the button for you. Yeah. yeah. I can press the button. <laughs> okay. Okay. You have to There's that kind of as well. But also okay, so, uh, so like a half a day of training. Half a day of training, I've never used the machine. Half a day, I mean, if you already know how to do vector design, if many of you know um, Illustrator out there, you already know what vector design is like. Inkscape. Inkscape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're coming up with a set of vectors to run the robot tools. It's probably the hardest thing. Actually getting the robot tools to follow those vectors is relatively easy. It's the vector design that it's the hard bit. Just, just point out, um, I don't know if we've said it yet, but the artifactory doesn't have any staff, so everyone is a volunteer. So if you need to learn to use a tool, you need to organise with somebody to learn about it. And um, so yeah, it's everyone just kind of teaching each other. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what the implication of that is. Don't expect well, them to just it's teach you. I mean, people but, are um, enthusiastic. Yeah, come along. And, um, so what helps with that, like bring food in? <laughs> right. I mean, what helps is if you've got a gang of people that want to do it, and if, uh, if we see that if there's a few people, like not too many, because it's it's hard to teach more than three or four people at a time. Um, but you know, we're, we're we're constantly struggling to survive. So if there's a bunch of people come in, and you know they're willing to pay like a workshop rate that we can put towards rent. Fantastic, great, welcome. And we teach it all at once. Yeah, yeah, we can teach all at once. Yeah, we can set something up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we've run workshops that run all weekend on this is how you put electronics into clothes and this is like the basic coding that you need to do for you know, cosplay people. They'll come in and laser cut it up all the phone to make their stormtrooper outfits and then we show them how to do blinky lights for their blasters and whatever other gadgets they've got. And yeah, we've done similar things for steampunk as well. Yeah, steampunk yeah. Build your own kite. 